Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. So what you're hearing there is the sound of a bad door actuator, and I'm going to show you how to replace that. So just stay tuned! So what we're talking about is the actuator, not the actual handle here. Um, these are notorious for breaking the handles here. Everybody knows that it's got a 350Z that these can break. I've uh, replaced this and I'm gonna actually show you how to replace one of these, but this is what we're talking about, the actuator, which is inside the door, listen. And what is happening is the actuator is not uh, allowing us to unlock the door up here so our lock will not function it's not an actual problem with the handle with opening the door it's actually a problem with the actuator not unlocking the door so we're going to have to take everything out of the door and replace the actuator so essentially this procedure will be the same for the driver's side or the passenger side. There's just one more small step with the passenger side. You're gonna to need to remove the handle that's sitting right there. Uh, that's just one extra step, but essentially it's the same for either side. Now I'm gonna recommend that you leave your glass all the way up for this procedure. It'll be a lot easier if you leave the glass up. And the first thing we'll be doing is removing this small aluminum piece off of the handle itself. And you're gonna go in right here with a plastic panel removal tool or a small screwdriver to get access on that. But yeah, this is pretty simple and you do not have to disconnect your battery for this procedure. So to get this uh, piece off, I grabbed a plastic panel removal tool here, and it was just a little too weak to get into that tight space. Um, it's really hard to get in there with a plastic piece. You may have one that's a little bit stronger than this one. I tried several different plastic ones that none of them worked. So I went ahead and got a metal uh, panel removal tool here, and that was the thing that did the trick here. Uh, you just have to make sure that the end of it's extremely thin, um, and then you'll be able to wedge in between the plastic and the aluminum. And you're just basically trying not to mar everything up here. So just go kind of slow, and you can see once you get it started, um, you can go ahead and pull it the rest of the way off. So let's make sure the end of this thing is real thin and you should be able to get in there. And just be careful when you're removing this. There's a lot of plastic tabs along the sides here and they can easily snap off. Uh, I actually broke one. This is my second aluminum strip that I put in here because I broke one uh, a few years ago. But now we have two bolts, two 10 mil bolts to remove to get this handle out. Okay, the key to getting these two 10 mil bolts out of the handle is to use a quite a long quarter inch extension here. I think mine's like 10, 12 inch long extension. So longer is better than shorter. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet here. And if you're having trouble finding the head of the bolt, just use a little flashlight to uh, look inside there before you start. And once you get both of these bolts broken loose, you may need a magnet to actually pull these out, but you wanna go ahead and pull both of these uh, 10 mil bolts out of the handle next. So at this point, you can see I'm just gonna tug on the handle to break it free. And usually the handle will come free of the armrest itself. But at this point, you can see that the actual automatic window switch is coming off with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that leverage to break that out as well. Normally the handle should come out just like this. Now that the handle's loose, we can pull the switch out and we can disconnect the electrical connection to the switch as well. Now, when it comes to removing these tabs or pushing in these tabs to remove the electrical harnesses from a lot of the uh, different sensors on the Nissan 350Z, I often have a lot of trouble pushing them in with my fingernail. Um, usually I'm often grabbing a little small flathead screwdriver to assist me because it really is just hard to pinch a lot of these things. So you may be able to get it with your finger, you may not. Uh, use a small flathead if you can't, but you can see it easily comes disconnected and now we can set the uh, automatic window switch aside. 
Okay, next up, there should be another 10 mil bolt right in this area right here. Um, I don't have my camera set up to get that angle perfectly, but it's right in there, it's not hard to miss. Mine did not actually have a bolt in there. Yours may or may not have a bolt in there, but if there is one, go ahead and remove that next and get that out of the way. Okay, next up, we're gonna move to the handle area. There's a little plastic sheath that's right underneath here. We're gonna need to remove that to gain access to a 10 mil bolt that's holding the panel on. So it doesn't take much to get that off. I'm gonna use a very small flathead screwdriver here and just a light pry is all it takes. Don't damage your door panel. And you can see it'll slide right out once you lift it up. Now we'll have clear access to the 10 mil bolt behind this. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you exactly where this, the well, a 10 mil bolt is down in here and it's kind of hard to see. Sorry, the line's not exactly right, but you can just barely make it out there. You can use either a Phillips screwdriver or a 10 mil socket. I'm gonna use the same thing I used on the uh, prior bolt, 10 mil bolts here, an extension with a quarter inch ratchet, and you should be able to get access pretty easily with that. Once you break it loose, you may need a magnet to pull that uh, bolt out as well, uh, or it may come out with your ratchet. Now that we finally got all the 10 mil bolts that fasten the door panel to the door frame, we can go ahead and remove this panel from the door itself. Now, I like to grab this corner right here and give it a hard tug. That usually breaks it loose. If you've never taken your panel off before, you may have a little more difficulty. You may have to struggle a little bit, but you can see mine here breaks loose really easily. I've done it so many times, it's uh, kind of loose at this point, but you may need a plastic panel removal tool to get in there to break it loose. But once you go ahead and go around the perimeter of the door panel, it should easily now just lift straight up. So once you get all the fasteners all the way around to broken loose, what you're gonna do next is lift straight up and that's gonna separate it from the top of the door frame and, and get it, break it free. So all we have left now is two of the uh, cables that actually control the locking mechanism. So we're gonna remove that next. Okay, so this is the other side of the door panel here and we have two cables. Uh, one attaches to the lock and one attaches to the handle so you can open the door from the inside. So we're gonna start with this lower one right here and the good news is it's not very hard at all. They pull right out. Just grab them really close to this area right here and pull straight out and then you can lift this little L-shaped uh, piece out of the door handle and then the second one's a little ball so it's even easier so we're going to go ahead and grab it in the same area right here by that white plastic piece and pull straight out and then lift this little white ball that's the actual um, i think that opens the door itself right there so now that we've got these two cables disconnected we can go ahead and set this whole door panel aside Okay, next up, it's time to remove the glass from the window frame itself. And don't worry, it's a lot easier than it sounds. There's just three 10 mil bolts holding this glass to the window regulator assembly. We're gonna remove three of these little black patches that'll give us access to three 10 mil bolts that hold the glass to the regulator. And then we can slide the glass out. Then at that point, we can remove this whole aluminum panel right here. This thing comes out and then that'll give us access to the door actuator back here. Okay, we're gonna to need to release this harness too, but here is one of the bolts, 10 mil bolts that hold the uh, window glass to the regulator itself. It's right in there. It's kind of hard to see, it's not enough lighting, but there's one 10 mil bolt right there. So we're gonna pull this little patch back to gain access. You can pull it completely off if you want. I left mine hanging. Here's number two. It's right here behind the cables. Here, there's the door actuator deck back down behind there. But here's the second bolt that you're gonna to need to uh, peel this little patch back to gain access to that bolt. Remove that 10 mil bolt. And the third one is right here. Um, right here below the other one. You're gonna remove that one, this one, and this one. And that will release the glass. Okay, I'm gonna release the regulator harness now. And we'll also have to release this harness right here from the door panel later. Um, you probably won't have this sound deadening right here. This is just something I put on there. And this is the infamous reset switch that we'll be using later on to reset the window so it'll close properly. It's right behind there. Normally it's a little black 
uh, covering, but I removed mine and put a little piece of aluminum tape. So now we're gonna go ahead and break the first 10 mil bolt that's holding the glass to the regulator. Uh, what you wanna do at this point is remove the bolts completely. If you can't get it out, you might have to use a magnet once you loosen it. Okay, you can see at this point, I'm breaking the second bolt loose from the regulator. And at this point, you don't have to hold the glass, uh, but you definitely want to when you start to break the third bolt loose. So I'm breaking the third bolt loose right here. And you can see now I've got my hand on the glass. You just don't want the glass to shift and fall down into the door uh, frame itself. So once you get the third bolt out, you're good to go. We're gonna be lifting the glass out next. You can see I momentarily let my hand off and it's pretty stable right here, but just don't bump the door and drop the glass. So now I'm gonna grab it with two hands and it's pretty easy to lift out here. You can see the three points of attachment here, here, and here. And now we can go ahead and set the glass aside. Okay, next up we're gonna be removing 12 10 mil bolts around the perimeter or outer edge of this metal dust shield here. And we're gonna go all the way around the outside and remove every one of these. Um, we're not gonna touch anything in the center here. There's a bunch of bolts holding the uh, regulator and motor assembly that controls the window. We're not gonna touch any of those bolts. We're just gonna get the ones on the outside and this whole dust shield comes off and everything stays attached to that. So that's the good news. Okay, to break these loose, pretty simple, just a 10 millimeter socket with a quarter inch ratchet. Here's what I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna go all the way around the outside. That's pretty simple. Just make sure you keep track of your bolts. Now, when you go to separate this panel from the door, there is a little bit of uh, weather stripping, let's say foam, and it's got a little bit of stickum actually that helps it uh, stay attached and watertight. So once you get all these bolts out and we start to remove the actual metal piece from the door, it's gonna stick a little bit. So you can see I'm using a plastic panel removal tool to kind of break it loose. And once you get it going, it'll start to uh, detached from the door, so, but you're gonna have to kind of pull all the way around the perimeter of the uh, little metal sh dust shield to get all that stick them to break loose. So just take your time, don't rush it. You don't wanna bend this thing or anything. Um, and that stick them can be a little hard to get going, but once you get it going, it will break loose. And once you get it to break loose from the door, you're gonna lift straight up. So lift up. We still have one little harness attached to the metal dust shield. We need to detach that next, but now we're almost home free. All right, I've got a pair of needle nose pliers, a small pair, and we're going to release these little uh, plastic tabs that hold that little harness to the back side of the dust shield. And I had a little trouble with that one, so I thought I'd go behind the regulator and try this one first, and that was pretty easy to break loose but I started to have a little issue with this one. Now, um, be gentle with these, they're made of plastic. And if you break one, it's not gonna be the end of the world, of course, but we'd like to try to keep everything intact. And so I had to play with it for a minute, but eventually I was able to squeeze it together and push it out of the dust shield. And now we've got the harness free from the dust shield. We can go ahead and get this uh, dust shield and regulator unit out of the way so we can get started on uh, the next step. And basically here is what we're gonna be replacing. This right here is the actuator. Um, it's attached to the um, door handle uh, mechanism here and we're going to remove the door handle itself and then we're going to pull this whole unit out of the door and replace it outside of the door but I just wanted to show you where it looked like and um, we're going to go ahead and get the handle out next. So you saw there's just two bolts holding this handle on and there's a little metal rod that slips into the actuator unit so we're going to take this handle out and remove that rod from the actuator before we remove it from the door. It's pretty easy to do. You can see I'm using a small flathead screwdriver to remove these two rubber grommets that uh, cover these 10 mil bolts right here. Pretty easy to get those rubber grommets out. And then now we're just gonna use a uh, quarter inch ratchet and, and 10 millimeter socket to break these loose. It's not too hard at all to get these loose. Uh, only thing you need to be careful of is not, you don't really wanna drop your bolts in there. I mean, it's not the end of the world again if you drop those in there because we're still gonna be going in there and you'll have access to get the bolts out. But um, there is a metal bash bar with a hollow tube in there and 
and this bolt right here, I broke it loose and as I was spinning it out, it fell in the door and it almost went into that little hollow bash bar uh, in the door. So I was able to get it out with a magnet layer, but yeah, be careful of that. So you can see the handle easily lifts straight out once we remove those two Timo bolts. Um, you just have to lift upward because there's a little metal bar you see hanging there that sits into part of the actuator. So just take your time, go slow. It should just lift straight up and out. Um, if you're gonna swap your handle out, all you need to do is remove that little metal uh, rod from the handle and pop it onto your new handle. And it's pretty easy to swap out a handle if you need to. So that little blue plastic piece right there is what the handle rod slides into, and that's part of the actuator there. But next up, we're gonna go ahead and break these three Torx bits loose, and once we remove those, we can slide the whole actuator assembly out of the door. Okay, to remove these three, you're gonna need a T30 Torx spit to get these three little bolts out that's holding the actuator into the door. And I'm using a 3 8 inch ratchet here. So there's not that much torque involved here. So you can hand spin them out, no problem. Um, just go ahead and make sure you've got a T30 Torx spit before you start this job. Now, once I removed the bolts, I noticed they had blue thread locker on each one of these so that these things didn't back out. And there's plenty of thread locker on there, so I don't think we're gonna need to reuse more thread locker on these. Now, basically, this little plastic sheath, this white sheath right here, that needs to come loose and the whole assembly will come right out of the door. You can see it's loose right there, but this little plastic sheath, and it's very delicate too, by the way, um, that has four little clips and I had trouble getting my camera inside the door. But what you're gonna wanna do is stick your head inside the door. You'll see these little tabs. I know it's a little blurry, but right there where the end of the screwdriver is, you push, there's two tabs on each side of this little white sheath. And I'm sorry you can't really see much of it because I was really having trouble getting my camera in there. But push them in, you'll see it kind of release. There you go. You see it wiggle a little bit and I released one side and then you're gonna go in uh, from the other side and release, release it as well with a little flathead screwdriver. Now, I thought I had released the tabs on the other side and I didn't really release them that well. And when you can see, I popped it loose but, but I, and I almost broke the two tabs on the other side. So they're very delicate. I think this is the most delicate piece right here. Um, in the whole situation. So be very careful with that little thing. Now, it's not the end of the world. You could probably just duct tape that on to the door if you had to. But now this whole assembly is going to slide out, but there is a harness, one more harness attached to the actuator itself. It's down in here. Uh, you need to release that. And same thing as the other harnesses, it's kind of hard to release. So I had to use a little flathead screwdriver to pinch the little button to get it out. So now that we've got the door lock actuator assembly out of the door, we can go ahead and remove the actual module itself. Now, um, the good news is that these things aren't too expensive. I got mine from Z1 Motorsports. It was like 96 bucks. So that's not too terribly bad. There's no telling what Nissan would charge you to do this job. And I'll look it up and tell you at the end of the video. But the only thing holding this little uh, module on is two Phillips screws. So very simple to remove these two Phillips screws and uh, release the actuator. Now that little green uh, finger or tab on the actuator slides in to a little metal piece that's actually in this, this assembly. So it's pretty easy to see where it slides into. Once you remove your old actuator, you'll see where that little green piece slides in to the uh, assembly right here that hooks into the assembly. So, but it's pretty simple to figure out once you uh, remove the old one, it's right in here. Okay, in case you're wondering, this is what I was talking about, this little metal hook or slot right in here in the uh, um, assembly here, right there. That's where that little green finger or tab's going to slide into that. So it's not too difficult to get your new actuator to line up with that. And you can see I've uh, grabbed the old Phillips screws and now I'm gonna place my new actuator in there. Um, I didn't have the little green tab lined up just right so it wouldn't slide in. So it's not gonna fit in there unless you get that green tab lined up correctly. So that's the good news. It won't line up unless you get it to fit into that little slot. So I just have to had to manipulate this a little bit and it's 
able to slide right in now. So now you're just gonna grab your Phillips screws and place those back in and then tighten them up. Just snug them up, you don't have to go crazy. This is plastic, so you don't wanna break anything. So now we're ready to place the actuator assembly back into the door. And I'm not going to put all the full weight of this actuator on this little plastic piece before I snap it in. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just loosely put the torque spits back into the assembly uh, and attach it to the door and then snap that little plastic piece in. You can do it either way. I just didn't want too much um, weight resting on that little plastic piece. It seems pretty delicate to me. So I'm just gonna loosely place these in and then I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in and it pops right in, no problem. So that's good to go and don't forget to hook your harness up too at this point. So hook that little harness into your new actuator. Now you can go ahead and snug up your torque spits. I don't have any torque specs for you here, but just make sure they're nice and snug. Don't forget we've already got blue thread locker on there, so they should stay put. You know, you might wanna check them after a week or two to make sure that they're still nice and snug. So if you need to do a handle replacement, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We just need to remove this metal rod from your old door handle and place it onto your new door handle. Now this is actually my new door handle, but we're gonna simulate it here. So you see, I just pushed down on a tab, on the tab and slid this out. I'm gonna show you exactly where I pushed here, right uh, on this little piece right there. Right there, you push down on that and you can slide this little metal piece right out of your door handle. Now we're gonna place it into my old handle, but this will be your new handle. And it clicks right back in. And there's not much to it really. It's probably one of the most simple things you can do. So you just put it back in the hole and then just slide it back into this plastic tab. Just be gentle with it. It's all plastic here, so it's easy to break. So now we're ready to place it in the door. All right, you see that blue plastic fitting in there, make sure this rod ends up inside that. That's what's going to uh, trigger your door to open once you pull the handle. So if you don't get that metal rod into that blue fitting, uh, your handle's not gonna work. So take your time, it's pretty simple. It's not very hard at all to get that uh, metal rod to slide into the blue fitting. And then make sure that your handle's seated correctly. And then once you get it seated correctly, we can go ahead and place our two 10 mil bolts back into the handle. Just make sure that it clicks in nice and sturdy before you place the two 10 mil bolts back in there. Remember, they're, uh, they go right into this area right here and then replace the two plastic grommets over the screws. Now we're ready to place the dust shield with the window regulator back on. This corner right here needs to kind of get around that opening right there. So you see how I just kind of lifted it up and slid it around. Um, just take your time. It's really not that difficult at all. Just make sure that it gets uh, over that lip right there. And now we need to move these two cables around uh, the dust shield. So now we can just try to line up the 10 mil bolt holes. And it's really not that hard at all. Um, it's much more simple than I thought it would be. It just slides right on. So it's not quite lined up right here. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit and that's it right there. So now you just go ahead and place your 10 mil bolts around the perimeter. Okay, at this point, don't forget to plug your window motor to your regulator back in right here. And when you're placing uh, the 10 mil bolts into the dust shield, make sure you leave these two bolt holes open for your door handle here. I almost put a bolt in that hole. Okay, now we're gonna place the glass back in. We're gonna start off with the front of the glass or towards the nose of the car. That part of the glass down here, you can see I've got it tilted down. And we're gonna go in nice and easy. Uh, keep it tilted down as you go in. And once you get the front part of the glass down, you can uh, start to level the whole piece out. So you can see I'm slowly working it in, just go nice and slow. It should fit in there relatively easy. You can see the front part here is not on the regulator or seated on the regulator correctly. So I'm gonna slide around here and make sure uh, it's lined up on the regulator correctly. So I'm gonna look through that little hole and once I see what's going on, I'm able to get the glass into the correct position. Now it's just gonna sit there by itself. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the three bolts back into the glass. 
Now I'm just loosely tightening these bolts right now because we still need to adjust the window and the window has a little give. It'll go forward a little bit and a little bit backwards. So what I'm talking about is uh, it'll adjust uh, ever so slightly. And what we want to do is keep this seam very tight. It, freeway speeds, this will leak back here. So I pulled my window back as far as I could and I like the way the seam is right here. Um, if it's too big of a gap, you'll definitely hear air rushing around there at freeway speeds. So I'm really happy with the way the window's sitting right now. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those three bolts down because I'm good with the way that, that the seam looks right here. You just don't want a big gap right there. Okay, now it's time to check your window and make sure it's working correctly. I went ahead and turned the accessory mode on. Now I'm gonna plug up the uh, window switch and we're just gonna check to make sure it rolls down. We're gonna do an auto reset on the window as well because usually once you disconnect everything and um, connect it back up, you're, there's an issue where it uh, reaches the top and it bumps the top and then goes back down. So the window's working correctly, that's the good news. And I'm gonna let it automatically go up and watch what happens, bing. So there's like a uh, anti, let's say pinch guard where if it thinks it's hitting somebody's finger or hand, it'll go back down and that's what it's doing now. So we're gonna do a, a auto relearn. I'm gonna show you how to do that next, but at least the window's working correctly. So first thing we wanna do is we're gonna start with the, uh, we're gonna start with the window down. So we're gonna obviously turn our power on. Okay, so we're gonna start with the window down. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna show you a close up of it, but there's a button down here, the reset button. I'll show you a close up uh, right now. But basically, first thing we're gonna do is we have this plugged in. We're going to hold the button, hold the button all the way up and do not do the quick release, but just hold it and close this window all the way up. So it's completely closed. Now that it's closed, we can let that go. Uh, we're going to now hold the reset button. So I'm pushing down with my right hand on the reset button. And then I'm going to open the window. I'm holding it down. Do not do the quick thing. So it's completely down. And now I can let my finger off both the reset button and this right here. Uh, next, we're going to Put the window up again, but this time we're not going to hold the reset button. We're just going to hold it again, just like this. So it's all the way up. Now I'm going to let it go right there. And now we'll take the one with the little ball. We're going to open the door. And now it should be completely reset. So let's try it. Let's, let's close the door. And let's. Do the auto down. Let's go all the way up. And it doesn't bounce back down. If it bounces back down, you will need will need to relearn, do the relearn trick again, but that's what it should do right here. I'm gonna leave the window down so we can put the panel back on and make it a lot easier. But yeah, that's the reset button. Now before you open the door again, disconnect this um, well, turn it off, number one, turn your car off, and then disconnect, you're going to have to disconnect this to install the door panel, I go, got that off, now, now you got your switch off again, we can go ahead, open the door, and we're going to, you know, put the panel, door panel back on. Okay, once you've completed the power window reset procedure correctly, it's time to place the panel back onto the door and we're gonna take both of these cables and reattach them to the handle and locking mechanism. Remember, one's a ball and then one's like that little L shape. It's pretty easy to do. It's uh, not gonna be an issue for you. And once you get those connected, uh, you just wanna make sure that you don't trap this harness to the uh, automatic window button behind the door panel itself. So we're gonna kinda thread it through uh, once we get the the door panel like semi 
uh, mounted onto the door frame. We we're gonna kind of hang it on here first and then we're gonna make sure that that harness doesn't get trapped behind the panel. So the, this is a little bit easier said than done. It's not super difficult, but it did take me a few minutes to, uh, to get this thing to slide on correctly. So start with the front. I think it's easier if you start with the front of the panel towards the front of the door and then work your way towards the rear of the door panel. That's what was easier for me. And just make sure that it's completely hung in there correctly. You'll know it's hung in there correctly when all the little door tabs line up with the little holes in the door frame itself. So right here now it's completely hung right. And now all the little tabs that click into the door are lined up correctly. You can look in and see that they line up correctly. Then you're gonna go ahead and pop them into position. You can see, also see I've got the uh, power window switch harness um, hanging out of that little armrest hole right there. Make sure that you don't, like I said, trap it behind the door panel. Now we're gonna go ahead and place the electrical harness back into the power window switch. It was super simple, it pops right in. Now we can go ahead and pop the power window switch back into the armrest and that was very easy as you can see. And now all we have left is the actual handle itself. Um, just make sure that you have it in the correct orientation. I've tried to put it in here and realize, uh-oh, this thing's uh, upside down. So make sure you've got that correct before you go to the bolt down procedure. But remember, it's just two Timbo bolts that hold this thing in. Now when placing the aluminum strip back in, there's a plastic tab that goes on the top of the handle. Make sure that the plastic tab is on the very top of the handle. And this is another one of those super delicate pieces, uh, plastic pieces. It's got those little plastic tabs uh, like we talked about in the beginning of the video. This you need to be very gentle with, otherwise you're going to break it. So just take your time. Don't force it. And you can see I'm kind of slowly working it in and snapping it back into position. And uh, you start from the top and work your way towards the bottom. Don't forget about this little plastic piece that goes underneath the door handle. It just slides back in and pops in. No problems with that one. We're going to go ahead and lock the door. You can see it's locked. Windows perfect. Now we're going to unlock it. Beautiful. Look at that. No problem. Problem solved. So if this video helped you out, don't forget to give me a big old fat thumbs up. And until next time, you know what to do. Just keep on repairing.